Tyler the Creator is one of the biggest artists in the game right now, just releasing his album Chromatopia, which has crazy unique production, which we're gonna be breaking down in today's video. If you don't know me, I'm actually one of the bigger producers on YouTube for Tyler Beats right now, so that's pretty dope. If you wanna learn how to sell beats, click the first link in the description below. Let's get into it. So we're gonna make two beats in today's video. One's gonna be more like the chill, kind of more regular sound, like the songs you see on screen. The second beat's gonna be more like the darker, hard sound, like the songs you see on screen. So I'll play some previews of those and then we'll get into it. So first thing you need to understand is the influences. Before we even get into the FL Studio, the beats, all that shit, understand the influences because Tyler is not like a normal artist that just lays down like a normal like trap beat and then just raps on it normally. Like he's all over the place with it and it's fucking crazy. So you have to understand, you know, obviously influence from like trap stuff, rap stuff. Uh, he's big on Pharrell. So you want to be in like that realm. You'll start thinking that. Also takes influence from like jazz, soul, stuff like that. So it's a little bit of like everything. So we're going to take all that use it together and then this is what we get so pretty much all my sounds are from analog lab i feel like those analog type things if you have like a real synth that's even better that's perfect for these tyler type of beats and in analog lab there's a certain one i really like this one right here dx7 that one's really good for this type of stuff i just started by laying down this chord progression So Tyler has a little bit more of a unique sound, advanced sound. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I built this progression. So the first thing I always do is just go to the scale highlighting. So view and then scale highlighting, and then we got the A sharp major. So then all these like highlighted notes are the ones in the scale. So as long as you follow those, you'll be good. But here's the thing with Tyler is he doesn't always follow the notes in the scale. So most of your tutorials on YouTube, they tell you to do that, just follow the notes. This is gonna be a little bit different. So. We're going to start by just making a normal progression, follow the notes in the scale. I'm going to show you how to sauce it up and really give it that Tyler feel. So we're going to start by just laying down uh, A sharp major chord. So the way you lay down your chord progression is you just place a note, you skip every other note in the scale, which is the highlighted notes. So we do this, A sharp major, and I just like to stack more on top of it for these beats. So maybe even up here. Then I just went down five. So yeah, right here, we just got an F major, stacked a bunch on top again. And now here's something that Tyler does a lot is just fuck with the voicing. So this C is like too high up compared to this. So I just put it down here. It flows way better than when it was up here. Now the next chord, this is where Tyler's sauce really comes in. This is what I call a major to minor switch. It's something he does in a lot of his beats. I've heard it in like Pharrell beats as well. So that's kind of where the inspiration comes from. But you know, you just take whatever chord you're on and then you change it into a minor. So the way to change a major into a minor is grab this one, and you just kind of like grab every other one. So they do that, and then you go down one semitone. Now I'll show you this last chord. I don't know the music theory term, so don't come at me. I learned this from an Enviro video. Shout out to bro. Basically, a good way to transition back into your first chord is to do the following. What you want to do is you want to go down four no four notes so the bass note that you want to transi transition into is a sharp so we're going to go down four notes in the scale so one two three four that puts us on d sharp then we're going to build what well, i believe i fucked up in the beginning it's a, called a dominant seventh i'm pretty sure i don't know music theories so don't sue me but this is what it looks like so you're just going to skip the one note in the scale and then you're going to build a diminished chord on top of it which a diminished chord is like all the notes have equal spacings so i'll just put one Yeah, then this was like too far down, so I just fuck with the voicings again. And that makes the transition better. Then what I did at the end here was I had like this little break section where there's just like four in a row. You'll see like the drums go along with it perfectly. I actually produced this like switch up after I made all the other melodies and drums and stuff. But just for tutorial sake, I'll show it all here. But I just had four chords going down. That's something Tyler does a lot is like just going down. Bonus points if it's chromatically. Let me see. Like right here, it's chromatically going down the scale. So stuff like that is very, very commonly used in Tyler's music. So I just had four chords just to transition it back to the beginning. 
So a few things to remember for Tyler chord progressions is one, don't just use like the basic major and minor, use sevenths, ninths, even elevenths, do the major to minor switch, use the dominant seventh to transition back into the first chord, have lots of things going chromatically down, use notes outside of the scale, and then you'll be perfect. I know it sounds like a lot, but with repetition, it's very, very simple. You can just use like basic chords to start and then kind of just start to sauce it up a little. So that's what I've always done and it's working very well. So now that you have that, that's 90% of the work done. You just want to layer it with a bunch of sounds, so. Got a little top melody. Yeah, going down chromatically like we already talked about. Then, I think for these beats, a grand piano is very, very good. Sounds like grand piano, E piano, Rhodes, strings, stuff like that is very, very good. layering the same top melody on two different octaves slightly offsetting this one just so it gives it like a little bit of a strummed feeling on the piano and honestly on all the other sounds i did like the basic stuff you've seen in all the tutorials you know strum it with the uh, option r and then you know or option s and then randomize it with option r yeah i didn't you know it's in every fucking tutorial after that we're sounding way fuller now since we have the same chords on a bunch of different sounds with some top melodies Now I just use like this guitar sound. For the bass line, I just started by, you know, just using the bass notes that were in the chords. But to transition into each one, there was some type of like little melody that I added in between all of them. Just to sauce it up a little bit and just give it some rhythm. Now there's two ways I go about making these beats. Sometimes I'll actually start with a drum break and then, you know, if you have a drum break already, base the bass line off of like where the kicks hit and stuff like that. But sometimes I'll actually make the bass line, make the entire melody first, then add the drums at the end and then base it off of the bass line. So to make sure like the, your kicks and your bass line work together, especially with the chords as well. It's all like one coherent thing instead of like this playing some random rhythm, this playing something else, and then out of this little sweep, you could barely hear it. I don't even know if I use it in the beat. Using notes in the chords, going up a couple octaves. Tyler often uses like these bell sounds. And again, going down chromatically, just using notes that were in the chord progression. Finally, to really sauce it up, I have a couple instances of arcade. And then here's the second instance of arcade. Here's the first flute. Another flute playing the same melody. If you have two sounds that play kind of the same melody, what you could do is pan one left and pan one right. That just helps like separate it, make the mix a little bit wider and sound a little bit better so they don't clash. So that is almost everything. There's a couple things left, the drums and then the chimes. So I just added a couple chime sounds just to kind of like transition through the melody, give it some extra like ear candy. So. And then the drums so i just added these basic fl studio drums in here not the best drums in the world but it gets the job done and i just laid down this pattern everything hitting very softly with the velocity i didn't want like crazy like hard hitting drums here you'll see i just have a synth layered those same chords at the end So finally, this is the full loop. This 
this is gonna be a little bit confusing because I used three different FLPs for this beat, but so I exported the loop, I pitched it up, and I just honestly let that play for a while. Like that alone could have been a full beat. Like there was drums, there was a bunch of melodies, like that alone could be wrapped on. But after a while, there's a tempo change and a pitch change. So Tyler does a lot of beat switches, but they're not full beat switches. Instead, they're just kind of like transitions. So instead of switching the beat, I just kind of had it transition into like new drum pattern, but the same melodies just pitched up in a different tempo. This drum pattern actually comes from a different beat of mine. I sampled myself because I was lazy, but this is the drum pattern. I honestly just look up like Pharrell drum kit just because like that's where the inspiration really comes from. And what I do for these is I like to layer a lot of sound. You're not just going to use one snare or one kick. You're going to like layer a bunch together to give it a new sound. So we just started with like the basic snare sound or pattern and we layered another. Then we layered a third. Then we have a kick. And then we layered the kicks. And with these beats, you don't want to just do like normal hi-hats like a trap beat. You want to use a lot of percussion to fill in the spaces. And then if there's any space left, then you go in with either the hi-hats or a shaker. Yeah, we exported that, slowed it down a little bit, threw it on that beat, and then that beat was done. So for Tyler's darker sound, it's very much percussion based with minimal to no melody at all, and a lot more trap influence. So, so to start out, we grabbed some of these percussion loops from Splice. All together. That already gives us really good rhythm. Now it looks like there's a lot going on in here, but trust me, it's much more simple than it looks. We literally start out with a default FL Studio snare. I know I suck. I literally just use the default snare. Very similar principles to the last drums where there's a lot of different layers of the sounds. So there's like three, four snares here. And there's also a lot of percussion and not like a lot of like trap hi-hats or anything like that. So we layered this snare with this one and this one. Kicks, layer of course, and then here's like all like the different percussion elements. I actually don't have hi-hats at all in this, it's just all the percussion fills up all the space so it's not even needed. So finally we layer the kicks with a super distorted 808. Went to Analog Lab, laid down the just super basic dark melody using the notes in the 808. For another melodic component, I found this siren. Then I added a bunch of risers and different effects just to sauce up the arrangement. This is what we got. That is my take on Tyler the Creator's production. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn how to start selling beats for Black Friday, my course is only $100. First link in the description below to learn more about that. Click here to watch another video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.